today on this old house. So Charlie, you know, when we start these projects, it's always, it's an old house. What are the bones in this? Do we have any issues? The bones in this house are actually a really good shape. I love this. I mean, this is classic shingle style. A front entryway that is a huge room. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. One of the things that sets New England apart from other areas on the coast are its fishing villages. They sprang up hundreds of years ago as hard scrabble working towns. This is Cape Ann on Massachusetts' North Shore, and it's home to granite quarries and a fleet that once fed the nation. And right now we are sailing into Manchester by the Sea, one of the towns on Cape Ann. For hundreds of years, Manchester was a quiet little village, but then in the mid-19th century it was discovered by wealthy Bostonians, and here they helped refine a distinctly American design, the shingle style. And let me guess, that's our next project? <laughs> Richard, you're a genius. Thank you. No, I'm giving him some bait and see if he can put it on a hook. <laughs> hey, Gilligan, who's driving the boat? <laughs> Manchester by the Sea, one of my favorite projects. And that was a big shingle style. You know, and this shingle style was so popular in Newport, Rhode Island, Southampton, New York, and right here in Manchester by the Sea. Manchester's also known for its ledge. I mean, it is everywhere on the site, so we're gonna have to work with it. Well, it's one of the reasons why the homeowners bought the house. They love the site. I mean, they love the outdoors, they love the hike. So being out here amongst the trees and the ledge, it's just what they wanted. Yep. Now this house was built in the 1890s, and after taking a good look at it, it needs some love. For it sure, sure does. does. Yeah. Want to go meet the homeowners? Yeah, let's do that. All right, we'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, see okay. You. All right, Tommy. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's going to be a great project. Hey, hey, guys. hey John. How are you? Welcome. How are you, Kevin? Tom. Good to Molly, see you. How are you? Good to see you, Kevin. Molly. Good to good see, see you, Tommy. Good to see you. And who is this? We have not met her. This is Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Caroline. Caroline, can you say hello? How are you? <laughs> Maybe not today. <laughs> she's, a, she's allowed to be shy. How old is she? She will be three next week. Awesome. All right. There she goes. There she goes. <laughs> Independent. She feels very at home. <laughs> so exactly. tell us a story, guys, because you, you bought this place almost a year ago, but you're right. not officially living here yet. That's right. We had a, a house down in Cape Cod, and we sold that. That was a long commute, and oh, yeah. we're looking up here in Cape Ann and said, gee, you know, it's 45 minutes from Boston, the train's right here, let's look, you know, in Manchester. And we found this, uh, you know, beautiful uh, spot and uh, have been basically taking a year camping, you know, weekends. And I, I call summer. it camping with walls. Yeah. Camping with yeah. walls. Yeah. <laughs> with my own private bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good idea though, right? Sort of get a feel for the house before you make the big decisions. Definitely. So when we first bought, we thought we kind of had an idea of how we wanted the house laid out. And as we've been here, we've realized that actually we've made some changes to what we originally thought. But it's, it's really been fantastic. And then getting to know the neighbors, uh, that's yeah. been great, great too. Area. So it's, yeah, it's, it, it's really confirmed uh, our decision to, to buy here. So we're, we're really fortunate. Yeah. Well, we'd love to get a feel for it. So uh, you guys up for giving us a tour? Yeah, sure. Caroline, do you want to show Tom your bedroom upstairs and show him what we want to do to it? <gasps> Let's go. Okay, see. Yeah. great, yeah. awesome. Hey, Mom, right. can you show me downstairs? Sure. You want to... All right, we'll catch up with you're you guys. Right. Let's you want to go. Walk? Okay, let's right, go. So I guess we'll start with this front room here, uh, which was what? This was the formal living room. Uh, okay, and it's yeah. going to become? And it will still be the living room. We're going to try not to make it so formal. You're less formal. Yes, we definitely want to make it livable. Nice. Um, that's our goal. Tall ceilings, yeah. um, a lot of windows, three on one wall, one on another. That's not bad. Yeah, and this window will actually become the entrance to the dining room. Oh, really? So we're actually going to have two pocket doors here. So the um, we love the view. Away. 
from the porch. Yeah, that'll, that'll yes. be nice. So that'll right, open right up into there. Exactly. So the flow will be from dining room to living room? Yes, we like the idea of guests coming in, the front door immediately coming into the living room, having a drink or two, and then going into the dining room. You guys can retire to the fireplace. Nice to have one of these. Do you have any idea if it works? Yes, we have no idea. Um, it has not been used in 45 years. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to figure it out together. We will figure it out together. A carved mantle surround. Look at that. What's your thought on this? Yeah, so the previous owners brought in this mantle. Um, we're going to see how, you know, as, as we start to do the interiors of the home, if it goes with the interiors or if we're going to change it out. They brought it in, so not original to the house. Correct. Okay. That is correct. Some built-ins, modest built-ins, left and right of the fireplace. Stay or go with these? So the built-ins will go. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is that behind this built-in right here is a door. There, oh, there is? Yes. To where? <laughs> um, currently, it is a door to the dining room. Interesting that they closed it off. They closed it off. You'll see it when we enter the dining room. The door is still there. And what will you do with it? Um, so for us, this will become a door to the butler's pantry, oh, which will so lead you to the kitchen. Reactivate that door. Yes, that's correct. Nice. Uh, so the built-ins will go away. And how about the yes. beautiful carpet? <laughs> the carpet, um, well... <laughs> We're very excited that we actually found hardwood floors underneath the carpet. Oh, really? So, yeah. Is this is cut here? Yes. Can I pull this Take back? So let's see. You got a pad. Oh, yeah. There they are. Mm -hmm. Wider than the ones you have out in the hallway, but. You're yeah. definitely going to be happy when those get cleaned up. So exactly. you take the carpet out, expose the hardwood. Expose the hardwood, get rid of the built-ins, yep. expose the doorway, new doorway into dining room. Keep the pocket doors? Do they work? Yes, we love these pocket doors. Um, Ooh, they kind of work. Hang on. They... All right. <laughs> that will be restored. <laughs> yeah, well, never throw away a pocket door, right? Uh, yeah, they're heavy wood pocket doors. We love it because in the wintertime when it's cold, this may, be the cozy, this may become the cozy room that right. we all hang out in. Cool. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Yes. And it will close you off from a very public space, although I love this. I mean, this is classic shingle style, a front entryway that is a huge room. We, we love this room. And in fact, a lot of people have said when they first come in this home, they're like, we see a big Christmas tree right here in your entryway. <laughs> I mean, it's the size of some people's small houses, which is great. And you've got the exposed staircase and balustrade, which is terrific. Again, says sort of shingle style, classic old house. This is one of the first things that we loved when we walked into this What's home. What's not to love about um, this, right? It just seemed open and inviting. Uh, we find that the staircase itself is really interesting. The, the handrail is concave, which you don't see anymore. No, you don't. Sort of counterintuitive mm -hmm. for the way you use it, which is nice. So, yeah, so we definitely want to keep that. We'll pretty much keep all elements of the staircase except for the balusters. Uh, yeah. Just see. So that needs a little bit of work. Look at those. Just a little bit. Three per tread. So you think these have to be either be replicated or replaced in their entirety? I think they're going to be replaced in their entirety. Nice. Okay. Yeah. And the door that was covered up, is that yes, in here? Yes, that's in the dining room. Let's have a look at it. Oh, yeah. There it is. There well, it that's is. That's going to be cool when that's reopened exactly. and get in here. Exactly. It would be a great entryway. In a cool old dining room. Boy, with mm -hmm. every character that you would expect from an old dining room. The uh, high wainscot panels. Yep, a dish rail right there. Giant fireplace right in the middle. Mm -hmm. China cabinet flanking it with leaded glass doors. You like that? Yes. We do. Unfortunately, this room is going to go undergo a huge transformation. So let's talk about what it becomes, because you mentioned dining room is going to be off that living room. Exactly. What goes so, here? Unfortunately, this is going to become, or fortunately, this will become the kitchen. Kitchen. So we loved this room when we first moved in, but it is one of the most central rooms to the home. Yeah. And as you know, the party's always in the kitchen. So one third will become the butler's pantry, mm -hmm. approximately. And then the rest of this will become the kitchen. And we're actually going to bump out this kitchen um, about 10 to 12 feet. Nice. So expand it, pick up those backyard views. Exactly. We're going to have lots of windows looking out over the trees, which my husband and I love. Yep. Um, and then to the left will be the family room. And right over here will become the breakfast nook. So now we are going out to the porch, probably like a three-season porch. Yes. Classic shingle-style porch, b-board on the ceiling, shingles on the walls. <laughs> Someone added sliders. <laughs> uh, 
breakfast nook here, dining room here. Correct. And we'll be able to get through that living room with exactly. the big door. Exactly. So very porchy now. How do you make it feel like the interior house? Very good question. So we're going to be raising the floors to match the interior floors. One level. One level. We're also going to bump up the ceiling as much as we can. What's above? The master bathroom. Okay. And then we're going to be getting rid of the shingles on the side. So it will really be become an interior room. And then sliders become windows. Big, big, huge windows looking out over the trees. Cool, a lot of space. Mm -hmm. I've got to see the old kitchen. Oh, come on in. <laughs> so Kevin, quickly before we walk into the kitchen, um, I do want to point out that this hallway will soon lead to a new mudroom and garage, which nice. will be an addition on the house. People love their mudrooms. Yes. All right, let's have a look at this kitchen. Yes. So welcome to the kitchen. Um, this kitchen has a lot of unique features for Where a kitchen. Does this, go? this is a spiral staircase up to the study. I was not expecting to see no. that. <laughs> it's one of Caroline's favorite features, which scares me. I bet. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, over here we have lots of cabinets, so it's probably the pantry at some point. Plywood panel doors, no frames. Got it. And then over here is a huge fireplace yeah. in the kitchen. Brick. Um, so clearly not original to the house added at some Probably point not. after the fact. A little dated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some somewhat new appliances. I believe the kitchen was redone in the 80s. Wall ovens, cooktop. We got some tile on the countertop. Island, which is nice to have. It's a unique shape. Yep. Um, from mica on the countertop. And wow, look at the green floors. They match your carpet out on the porch. They do. We have a lot of <laughs> colors in this house. <laughs> so uh, we know where the new kitchen is going. What is going to happen to this space? So this will become the family room. Oh, and okay. really excited because, as we talked about earlier, the kitchen is coming out to the, pretty much where the end of this deck is. So this will be connected to the this new kitchen. This will be connected to the new you kitchen. You like that sort of open movement yes. of the floor plan. So I can see what's going on in the family yeah. room. Yeah, that's exactly. how we live today. Exactly. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. I know Molly has a concern about these balusters, and I think there's a way we can stiffen those up so she doesn't have to worry about them. Oh, that'd be great. It's one of the features, you know, 1890 house that we, we love. So for the most part, this stays the same. These walls are kept here. We take the wallpaper down, obviously, repair some cracks. Yeah, we can handle that. That's no problem. And here's the master bedroom space. right here. It's great wow. space. So we're going to take this All set of, this. of closets down. Yeah, that comes out. Yep. So because of that extra space, you'll notice we're going to have an opportunity to do more over here. So this will be walk-in closet and a master bathroom. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, you're definitely going to gain some real estate by removing that closet. Exactly, yeah. Now right over here, Tom, we're going to punch out a fireplace. There's a fireplace on the other side, but we're going to punch out a, uh, a gas fireplace here. Oh, good. Yeah. Nice to have a fireplace in the bedroom. Yeah. And so in this room, this is uh, currently Caroline's uh, bedroom. Mm -hmm. This will come out. So the fireplace comes out. So this is going to become what? Is this going to become a guest room or? A... Exactly. This becomes a, a small guest room and then this becomes Caroline's bedroom. Oh, okay. All right. Right here. And we'll move the door down a little bit. So this door will get slid over a little bit. Exactly. And so this is all bedroom? This is, this is all bedroom right here, and then it kind of makes a, a dog leg left okay. into this room where there's going to be a bathroom for her. I see. So yeah. she's going to have great space then. Exactly. So all this is going to come around, around into here. Exactly. This is a nice space. Here. Yeah, and there's a, there's a chimney in her room that we'll take down. And again, as you said, we'll pick up some real estate More from More real that. estate, yeah. Exactly. If you're not using the chimneys, why not get rid of them? Right, right. Because they are pulling the air out of Sucking the Sucking up hot air, exactly, yeah. 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 Okay, so up here on the third floor, Tom, we're thinking it's going to be a total gut. Yeah. Uh, one thing I don't want to lose, though, is this ceiling fan, this whole house fan. So that's a whole house fan. Nice thing about those, where you are here in New England, in the summertime, those, the temperature drops. You turn those on, open the windows, and it cools the house right down. Beautiful. Saves you money on the air conditioning. Beautiful. Uh, this, again, pulling up the rug, uh, gutting that room, but that will be a guest room. Oh, yeah. Uh, bathroom essentially stays the same, so we'll do a renovation of the bathroom. So a new bathroom. New bathroom. 
And then this was a, a dark room. The former oh. owner said it's a dark room. So we're going to blow that out and then take another chimney out of here. Oh, take the chimney down. So more real estate here. More real estate here. And then uh, right behind you, we're going to bump it out about three feet. So it's going to go that way three feet. Go that way three it's feet. It's going to make a big difference. And this is great space. Yeah, it really is. So this will be a great playroom for Caroline. Oh, yeah. And what about the rug? You're going to keep the rug? It's yours if you want it. No, I don't want it. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Richard. <laughs> Look at the ledge. There it is. They saw the ledge and said, let's build a house on it. Well, it looks like a lava flow the way it comes into the basement Step here. into my office. So what am I looking at? Have you figured it out? Well, it's like an archaeological dig. You try to figure out this house has been here since about the 1890s. How have they lived here through that period? I think when the house was first built, they heated the building when they needed to just with the fireplace that are existing. Which was probably a summer house, Absolutely. so they just wanted to chase to chill Abs in the fall. Absolutely, and that people get sick of schlepping the wood into those fireplaces or having people do it. So I think the first iteration was adding this duct system. Now you can see the ductwork is insulated, but it's pretty large. And you'll notice if you look down on the floor, you see the shadow line right here. This one right, right there, telling right, you right what? Right here, right here. Oh, there, right it is. here. Yeah, so there. It suggests that there was original coal-fired furnace probably right here, and that would have been gravity, no blower. Huh. So you would have loaded up to heat it, and it just would have worked up through the center core to heat the building. Good enough for the summer, right, fall, right, right. good enough for the center of the house. Right. But Then they, this is a new unit uh, fired by oil. It, that has a blower fan, right? right? But it, over time, this building, they added, they added on a kitchen wing, and the, the, that core would have been heated, but it wouldn't have sent the heat to that kitchen wing, so they added this boiler. Now, this was in the... This boiler I'm familiar with, it was probably in the 50s up to about the mid-60s is the last time these were installed. Mm -hmm. So now they put another oil-fired burner here, heated up the water. Now you can use that water to go to a couple of different zones. That goes to the kitchen, there and there. right, and to the, the bathrooms. Now that means the places where people would hunker down in the winter would have its own little sort of cocoon of heat, yeah. you know, because that couldn't always do the job. So it's sort of a typical evolution for That's a place right, like right. this. That's right. And this boiler, we could also, they use it to make hot water for faucets. Originally making hot water might have been on the kitchen stove, you know. Right. Anytime you have a water-based system, you can think about adding a little bit of radiant in the kitchen, the bathrooms, or in a room like this I want to show you Watch here. Your head. How about the granite? I see that, I think radon. Anytime I see a ledge, I think there's a chance of radon, so we've got to test for that, but we can do a mitigation system if we need to. All right. So here is underneath this space, this sort of porch area that... Yeah, we got know, this two, three season right. porch above us. So the idea is to actually bring this level up and pour concrete to turn it into an exercise room. Oh, so Could make this condi condition space? Absolutely. Could there be a better place for radiant heating than a nice big concrete slab that was perfect? You have nice windows here that will all be new. This is going to be a lot of found space. Right. And then over here... So now we're underneath the back deck. Right. So now uh, this is the new kitchen area right here. We extend the house. Right. So we have to think about protecting the plumbing here. So we've got kitchen sinks and water and stuff like that. So we're going to actually have windows in here and make this more of a conditioned space to protect and make the kitchen a little easier to heat and cool. So conditioned there, but this is still unconditioned in here? Right. And then right. pour a concrete slab here. Now in here is the existing garage. And this garage is going to be taken down from this point over, and now this will be the new outside wall right here. So finished space in this here. This is all part of the workout space yep. here. You can see our grade right here. You're going to pour up to this? Yeah, and Good. then this will get opened up right here, so it'll be a really generous and really pleasing space in here. A lot of extra space, and yeah. you know what? This sounds like a big one. I mean, the mechanical, it's got a little bit of everything. This is. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Yeah, we're going to take down the uh, garage next week also. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Hey, Charlie. Hi, Thad. Hi, Norm. Now, you're the architect on this project. That's right. And this house is classified as shingle style. What makes it shingle style? Well, the biggest thing, of course, is that it is clad in shingles, both roof and sidewall, but also it has some of the classic features, such as these long, sweeping roof planes. There were very pure geometries used in shingle style homes, as well as that classic shingle flare you see at, at the belt course there with the sawtooth shingling is fairly common as well. The bones in this house actually are really good shape, Norm. So we have a you know, good structure as well as a good foundation to build on. Mm -hmm. So new homeowners, they want to make it better for themselves. What are we going to be doing? Well, quite a lot, actually, because it was a summer home and there was a different kind of lifestyle than as you might expect in the summers here versus what a family would need for a full-time home. 
the, the first most obvious thing would be the addition of a two-car garage here with a connecting mudroom to keep mm -hmm. the family out of the weather day to day, as well as extending a porch across the front of the home, which all, uh, summer homes have that, but this would be a really great place for the family mm -hmm. to, to enjoy. And also within the home itself, we would be looking at opening it up so rather than three compartmentalized rooms, the rooms would open one to the other, we, so you'd have a more open floor plan. Could we see the floor plan? An open plan means engineering, typically. It does, and there are some structural beams that we do have to put in, but one of our probably biggest challenges on this first floor is this is where the existing deck is, and that becomes part of the new kitchen. So we do have to frame the entire area. We also have to make sure that the plumbing in this, uh, is, uh, is insulated well from down below and heated. But, and then we have one large beam to uh, open up here from the existing dining room, making it the entire new kitchen. All right, I'd say that looks like a pretty good plan. Yes, it is. It's, uh, we're uh, well on our way. A lot of work. Yes. Jen, the homeowners have said they want a uh, mudroom off of this side attached to a garage. Have you gotten your head around that? I have, kind of. <laughs> but so they want to come out to a mudroom about 11 feet out, and then a garage is going to travel all the way. This is probably going to end in this corner. Nice. And then going this way, we're going to have a new access road, their new driveway. So, so, so we're not entering the house from the front anymore, from over here. Yeah, this is going to be the main access. And so in order to do that, we have to clear these trees. This slope cuts down pretty fast. So we're going to, mm -hmm. at the bottom, we're going to have to put a retaining wall so we can put the driveway and fill in. And so that'll travel right to right. up to the new garage. And so the homeowners are smitten with the lot. What's the final look that they want? You know, is it refined or wild? And it's what do you think of the lot? Wild and natural, just native New England is what they want. And I think they have a lot of potential to just uncover the ledge and just these beautiful plants. Like this is low bush blueberry right here. There's sweet woodruff, there's ferns all around. So let try to just let it go, but take out all the invasives. Well, there's something you're not gonna be able to let go because even a guy like me can notice it. <laughs> <laughs> you say garage and mudroom, and I say ledge. This well, this is, is not gonna work. Of, it's kind of in the way, but I do, lo I do love this rock. Yeah, but, but we're talking about coming over here with the garage and breezeway, right? I know, we gotta drill down. Drill, so, not blast? Drill, not blast, because that's what, that's the first option. If we have to blast, we have to blast, but drilling is the first option. So we're gonna drill down and cut it away and remove it from the site. All right, lots of industry. Yep. How about out back? Have you thought about that? Yes, I have a few ideas. And so back here behind the house, all these railroad ties are going to go. Uh, they want an open space for their daughter to play. So we're going to remove all these, take out all the weeds, and grade it and put down grass seed. That'll be a lot more natural. Mm -hmm. And here's a beautiful paper birch. And the homeowners really want to save it, and so do I. Well, the good news is, is that front half of that garage is actually going away, so about 15 feet or so. It won't be as close to the house when Charlie gets going. So that's no problem then. Just have to protect the roots and don't let any machines hit the tree. All right, Charlie, something else for your list. Protect the birch. And it's a long list. That's nothing, huh? That's nothing. That's easy. <laughs> we've got uh, demolition. We've got some new build with the garage, which means a foundation and maybe retaining walls with this site. Yeah, so we're going to start next week hard. We're going to start all the demo on the interior. And then right after that, we're going to start the excavation for the garage and the mudroom. And we also have to uh, put up a retaining wall to hold back uh, one side of the driveway. All right, boys, back in Manchester. You psyched? Great to be back. It's a big house. A lot of shingles, a lot of mechanicals. Got a lot of work to do. It'll be fun. You'll be busy, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, next time, demolition begins. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor for all of us here at this old house. Right, let's get, get started. started. Come on. Do it. Go. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.